Okay. Let me call to order the May 3rd, 2023 Committee of the Whole meeting from Pottstown Council. Would you kindly rise for a moment of silence, followed by the pledge to the flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to start with a presentation. 2022 Police Officer of the Year. <coughs> Chief Markovich. Is that better, Gus? Okay. So Sergeant Hatfield has served the Pottstown Police Department since August of 1999. And due to Sergeant Hatfield's professional and courteous demeanor, he is well known and liked by Sorry, by the community. Sergeant Hatfield, who is a Pottstown native, made the decision to serve the community, which he was a part of during his develop developmental years of his youth, which we are forever grateful. Sergeant Hatfield has continuously demonstrated his dedication and integrity in the performance of his duties. He's participated in all divisions of the Pottstown Police Department to include patrol, community response unit, Detectives Division, Bike Patrol, the K-9 Unit, SWAT, Honor Guard Detail, Field Training Program, and Special Ops Divisions. Sergeant Hatfield also served as a supervisor in many of those divisions. During the year of 2022, Sergeant Hatfield was one of the Potsdam Police Department members that volunteered to cover staffing shortages in the Patrol Division even though many of those days and nights conflicted with his own personal life. He can always be counted on to help accomplish tasks, and through that, he has earned the respect of his coworkers and the leadership of the PPD. Sergeant Hatfield has high standards and constantly sets a superior example for the junior officers and veteran officers to follow. Sergeant Hatfield has served as a police officer for the borough of Pottstown with honor and integrity, will now be recorded. which brings credit brings to both credit him to and the Pottstown, Pottstown Police Department. Department. It is therefore, it is therefore that, the that the Pottstown Police Department, police, police, department, police, department police Officer of the, of the Year Award, award for 2022, 2022 be awarded to awarded Sergeant, Sergeant Stephen L. Hatfield. Hatfield. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> nice job. No echo. Okay. Uh, okay, Don, you said it was in the package. How about transportation? I'll do transportation. Nothing. You mean uh, efficient methods? No, infrastructure. Oh, infrastructure is in your packet. Yeah. And transportation? Nothing. Got it. Now, on efficient methods. We had a meeting last month. Yes. And um, I'm going to go back through. These are all internal. So, I mean, there's the reason why we don't have minutes for this is because a lot of it has to do with personnel sometimes. So we don't really invite a whole lot of people at all, let alone um, share the minutes. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's for our protection. And um, I just wanted to mention that because it's been brought up. Um, we are going through um, some reviews of the departments again. Um, we're going to uh, research a new appointment system to assist and improve the LNI response to inspections and appointments. Pu 
Public Works uh, work order system is almost finalized. We had uh, something Doug had printed out for um, trash and uh, in general um, other work orders and complaints that Public Works has received. Um, so we have the data we're gathering and um, it gives them a focused direction on how to and which uh, complaints to, uh, to address. We're also working on a credit card payment ability at LNI. Um, for some odd reason, they have to go over to the desk for the public. They have to go to finance. Yeah, for finance um, to pay for the credit card. So we're looking into getting um, that uh, enabled uh, at the uh, LNI desk. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking into uh, what else? Nope, that was it. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Very good. How about ordinance review, Councillor Prosser? We discussed uh, short term rentals and signs. Yeah. Economic development. Ms. Lee Clark. Good evening, Councillors, Madam Mayor. Uh, so, I want to talk about some of the latest businesses that have come to town. Uh, Espresso so Yourself uh, is on Main Street, which is a wonderful um, collaboration between the Hill students as well as uh, Be Resilient. David Charles is in there with Strive, and there is also uh, a woman who is doing um, Maker Space, which she is a teacher at the Hill School. Uh, we also have 22 South Hanover opening, uh, it will be a sandwich shop, June or July. And you can see the, the uh, renovations going on to the outside of that building. Kiki is uh, expanding, so pizza will be available. And that is at 228 South. That will be coming um, before the end of the year, hopefully before the end of the summer. Uh, we also have coming soon a Medicare Education Services to 80 Robinson Street, which is going to be located right next to the Social Security office. So it's a Medicare information place, which will be very useful to the clients of Social Security. And that's David Morrison. Reports from Keystone Running tell us, that running and walking, tell us that they, in their first quarter, have exceeded what they thought they would do here in their first quarter in Pottstown. So that's very good news as well. We hope you're noticing that the banners that have been replaced and also more banners that have gone along High Street to add to the placemaking, there has also been lights. So the lights are through the generous donation of individuals who gave to the Light Up High Street um, initiative. We did run into some trouble getting an electrician to be able to do that. So if you will notice on the 200 block of the south side of the street, starting from Keystone Boulevard, or Keystone Running and Walking, straight through to Laser Works, you will see that the canopy of lights is up. It's been installed and I think adds an overall sense of security as well as a lovely view. That's a view of Steel River. They were the first to adopt. Um, so the expense does get paid. 50% of it has been paid by the owners of the buildings or the businesses themselves. We have been able, because the costs have gone up significantly, to offset some of those costs, those installation costs, through the ARPA dollars that paid received through the county, which are for placemaking and security and the general improvement of downtown, which leads me to the trash RFP that has been out on the street that paid is putting out. Those funds are covering the individuals to be able to do sidewalk cleanup. It's not street cleanup, but it is sidewalk cleanup. And the individuals, like in Lancaster City, that you see their clean team, they will be clearly identified with logos on their vest, and we do, we are reviewing those proposals now. So we hope to have something June 1. Good. I believe that is all I have for economic development. Would you like me to move right into Land Bank? Please. So Land Bank has um, been moving along with the two properties on Hale Street as well as Chestnut Street. Uh, that is been a motion has been filed by the land bank for clear title to accelerate the clear title on those two properties. And then the land bank also was able to acquire 948 Queen Street 
and that is under agreement with a developer in town that will do the renovations. So we will hopefully be getting to settlement within the next 30 days on that property. Good. Thank that you. is my report. Mm. Can I ask a question? Sure. Your property's on Hale Street. Um, that you're There's one. It's 421, it's and it's and it's a blank lot. Okay. I just yeah. wanted to make sure we weren't doing double work. No. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Human relations, uh, Ms. Levengood. Good evening, councilors, Madam Mayor, um, Council President. Um, Jewish American Heritage Month is celebrated during the month of May, and we would like to recognize the achievements, traditions, heritage, and contributions of Jewish Americans in our community. May is also Asian and Pacific Islander American Heritage Month, and we also like to recognize the contributions and the influence of the Asian Americans and the Pacific Islanders Americans to the history, culture, and achievements of the United States. Um, Mother's Day, a day to recognize our mothers. Motherhood and maternal bonds in general is Sunday, May the 14th. And Monday, May the 29th is Memorial Day for remembering and honoring persons who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Um, the Commission's May meeting will be held on Tuesday, May the 9th, 2023, at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers, and all are invited to attend. Very good. Thank you. Uh, where are we? Okay, the library. Uh, Mindy, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, uh, I have just a couple announcements tonight. Uh, we have our pre-registration for our All Together Now summer reading program for this summer reading program. Um, that is going to be all from babies all the way through adults. So everybody can take part in that. Um, I'm proud to announce that we have been awarded the PA Forward Bronze Library status. We are working towards silver and our ultimate goal, goal is gold. <laughs> That's hard mm -hmm. to say. Um, and on, I just wanted to let everyone know that on May 11th, we partnered with uh, Representative Cerisi's office and the Department um, Recorder of Deeds for Montgomery County, and they will be at the library from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on May 11th to assist veterans and homeowners with signing up for two free county programs. So feel free to let your veterans and homeowners know they can pop by the library on Thursday, May 11th, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m., and they will be there to assist you. And I, the last thing I wanted to uh, just say is thank you to the Public Works Department. We had a, a, a cover for something that was, was broken, and they worked very quickly with us to get that so it was all safe for our patrons. So I appreciate the partnership with the borough and, and the help with the Public Works. So. That's all I have for tonight. Thanks so much. Before you leave, uh, I would like to pass along my gratitude and thanks to your staff. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, it, it was recommended by our own Jenny Tackett that if you're going to get a passport or renew one, uh, that service is now available at the Pottstown Regional Library. Mm -hmm. And I did so. Uh, my wife and I were down there to get renewals. Um, and the, your, your staff that we dealt with couldn't have been better. So uh, thank you very much. I will pass that along. And I would advise anyone in the Pottstown area, rather than driving to, to uh, Norristown and going through the court <laughs> courthouse, uh, especially right now with construction, it's far easier and uh, to do so here at the Pottstown Public Library. And, uh, you know, everyone is trained. They answered all our questions. They, they couldn't have done more for us. Thank you. Our pleasure. Okay. Anyone is welcome to come in for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, it was great. Thanks. Uh, okay, the Ricketts Center, uh, you know, Joe, he's not on. No. Okay. Eric. Town School, uh, Trinita may be coming later. <clears throat> So uh, let me turn this over to our solicitor for a general discussion, Mr. Hovey. Okay, thank you, President Wien. 
Uh, this evening I wanted to discuss with you conditional uses and your role during conditional use hearings. Uh, this is something you're called upon to do several times a year and it's probably one of the things you're asked to do as an elected official that you, you didn't expect to do. The zoning or ordinance determines how properties can be used, both in terms of its physical use and how much area needs to be preserved for a front yard, uh, such as how much area needs to be preserved for a front yard, and active use, such as whether it can be used residentially or commercially. Generally speaking, with respect to active use of a property, a property can be used in ways, can only be used in ways that are permitted under the zoning ordinance. If a use is not expressly permitted by the ordinance, then it is prohibited. There are three types of permitted uses. Uses by right, uses permitted by special exception, and uses permitted by conditional use. If a use is permitted by right, someone can use a property in that way without any extra steps beyond obtaining a permit. Special exceptions and conditional uses are a little different though. If a use is permitted by special exception or conditional use, then it is a use the council determined to be allowed within the borough if the applicant meets certain standards or requirements which are laid out in the zoning ordinance. For these, there are added steps for someone who wants to use a property in a way that is permitted by special exception or conditional use. Essentially, a public hearing is required and the applicant needs to present evidence that the proposed use meets all the requirements of the ordinance for that use. The only real difference between a special exception and a conditional use is who presides over the public hearing. The Zoning Hearing Board presides over special exceptions. Council presides over conditional uses. The hearing on an application for a conditional use approval must occur within 60 days of the borough receiving the application unless the applicant grants the borough an extension. <coughs> an extension. Legal notice of the hearing must be published twice in the Pottstown Mercury posted on the property and also mailed to all known property owners on all, for, of all property within 300 feet of the property at issue. When the hearing occurs, counsel is required to keep a transcript of the proceedings. In other words, just like if you appeared in court, there needs to be a court reporter present who will transcribe everything that occurs and everything everyone says. This is because counsel's decision on a conditional use application can be appealed to the Court of Common Pleas in Norristown. If someone appeals, there's no new hearing or trial at that level. Rather, the appeal is normally decided on the record that is created here in this room before you as counsel. Counsel then is essentially the judge. When we have conditional use hearings, it's important that you remember that during that time, you are acting as a judge and not as an elected official. This obviously can be challenging at times because you naturally may want to interact with your constituents or represent their interests. You should not be expressing your personal opinions, however, during a conditional use hearing. Rather, as much as possible, you want to limit yourself to questions. Otherwise, it's like a judge during a trial telling a defendant or litigant that they are guilty or doing a good job on their way to winning their case in the middle of the trial. After the hearing, however, the application can be discussed either in executive session or publicly. At this stage, you may express your opinion based on the evidence that got presented during the hearing as you deliberate on the request for conditional use approval. If counsel ever wants to support or oppose an application for conditional use, there is a procedure for doing so, but again, unless we trigger that procedure, you will want to think of yourselves as judges during the meeting. This is especially true if a conditional use ap application is contested. In addition to counsel, neighbors may oppose conditional use applications. They can also appeal decisions to the Court of Common Pleas. As far as conditional use criteria, your ordinance contains certain standards for all conditional uses permitted by the zoning ordinance. They're contained in the appendix in section A400.3. I provided you with a copy of that section for your review, so I will not go over all of the criteria. Uh, but that section includes general criteria related to traffic, screening and buffering, and the impact of the proposed use on neighbors. If the applicant fails to present sufficient evidence to satisfy these criteria, then you may, you may deny the conditional use application. Conversely, if they do present evidence to satisfy these general criteria, as well as any use-specific criteria, then legally you must approve the use, even if it is controversial. You may, however, in conjunction with an approval, 
set reasonable conditions on the use in addition to any in the ordinance. In other words, if it's demonstrated during a hearing that the proposed use on the property presents some unique concerns, then council may spe set special requirements for that property so long as it is used as requested. For example, council could set limitations on the hours of operation, off-street parking, screening and buffering, or lighting. Whatever council decides to do, action on the application must occur at a public meeting and council is required to render its decision within 45 days of the hearing. If council either denies a conditional use application or places reasonable conditions on approval, the solicitor is normally required to issue a written opinion to accompany the order, which includes findings of fact, legal conclusions, and a discussion of the law which supports council's decision. This is why you'll often see Chuck and me asking the applicant questions during the hearing. We're never trying to give someone a hard time, Rather, we want to ensure that there's a complete record with testimony on the relevant factors in order to try to protect whatever decision you make. It is also why, again, I hope the takeaway is the importance of thinking of yourselves as judges during conditional use hearings, as well as the importance of asking questions. So with that, does anybody have any questions on conditional uses? No, but I appreciate the explanation. <clears throat> You're welcome. I missed some portions of it. Can you do it again? Sure, I'll be happy to. Thank you. <laughs> <coughs> oh, if nothing. Thank you, Mr. Hovey. Uh, and now for a report from our mayor, Mayor Henry. Good evening. Um, so since last time, um, I participated in Deer Day, which is Drop Everything and Read Day. It's probably my favorite day of the year. I love Rupert Elementary School, and I got to read to Mrs. Ferguson's kindergarten class. And after, they let me stay, because I didn't really want to go back to work. Um, <laughs> and I got to help out with their writing projects, and they were writing about um, what they were going to do to help out at home. So it was very exciting, and uh, they're so cute. So thank you, Mrs. Ferguson. Um, I also got to tour Dana facility. Um, I was blown away by the reception, um, the presentation that they gave me. I wrote all about it and on posted on Facebook, and you can read all about it there. So I can continue my report. I know Lisa wants to go home. <laughs> Uh, but I want to, uh, honestly, I really want to thank Holly Phillips, the plant manager at Dana. What an amazing facility. Um, go there if you haven't been there yet. Um, the YMCA did their Healthy Kids Day again. Um, we had a great turnout. There were some new tables and new businesses there. Um, Keystone Running Company was there, um, which I was excited to see. And uh, Philadelphia Rock Gyms. And also, Wawa came out with healthy snacks and bananas. And of course, our Pasta and Police Department was there. So thank you all for participating. And as Peggy um, said, we had the ribbon cutting for um, Espresso Yourself. And I'm very excited and want to congratulate the Hill School Entrepreneurship class and everybody else involved for creating a much needed, beautiful study and play space. Um, I also met with Surf Pro and um, Chief Hand um, and went, did a tour. Surf Pro does clean up fire, water restoration, um, prisons, vehicles, bodily fluids, anything you know we don't want to clean up. Um, there's some concern about um, lately there's been some aggressive, non-reputable, out-of-town contractors harassing some homeowners to use their services. Um, so I just, please be careful when hiring people to work on your house or to do anything. Um, there's a lot of scam artists out there and I just want people to know that we do have a reputable company, which is here in Pottstown, right on Robinson Street. Um, the Carousel has been doing First Fridays and um, Last week they had baby goats, which I went and uh, represented all of council because I didn't see any of you there and I held baby goats for you all. Um, it was great, uh, the kids loved it. I also volunteered in my lawyer role at the Will Clinic um, at the Senior Center yesterday. It was very well attended. 
We drafted wills, powers of attorney, healthcare powers of attorney, living wills. Um, and everyone um, that came in left with executed documents in hand. Um, so thank the volunteers, the Montgomery County Bar Association and the Senior Law Center. And then we had our community leaders breakfast meeting this morning at Community Health and Dental. In their new facility, it's not really that new, but it's new to me since I haven't been since before COVID. But um, I was just, again, blown away. What a gorgeous use of space and a welcoming it's beautiful. medical facility. And, the, and like they service everything from pediatrics to dental to vision um, to, they are like uh, the top rated opioid addiction treatment. Um, really gorgeous facility and they're on a sliding scale. So whether you have insurance or not, and you need a doctor and you need any of those services, I encourage you to go to Community Health and Dental, which is now at the mall, um, Coventry Mall. <laughs> Coming up, buckle up. Thanks to the rain, May 6th is gonna be busy. So on May 6th from 11 to five, we have our annual Colonial Mayfair at Pottsgrove Manor. May 6th, from 10 to three, we have our rescheduled Edgewood Cemetery cleanup and art fair. Mm -hmm. May 6th and 7th is the powwow at Riverfront Park. Mm -hmm. um, Ron would like everyone to know that grand entry begins at 12-ish Indian time. And uh, the suggested donation is $5 entrance fee. It's free, but suggested donation. And uh, please go if you haven't been. It's an, like really interesting, very cool um, festival that you would never see anywhere else. Um, also, May 7th is the Sly Fox Goat Races, um, which I may or may not be participating in, uh, depending on the goat. And um, May 13th is opening day at the farm, nine to one. May 13th is also a free, let me repeat that, a free community family tennis day. Greater Pottstown Tennis and Learning is putting on a free clinic at Maple Street Park from four to six um, for ages five to 10 and 11 to 18. So five to 10 will um, play from four to five and from five to six ages 11 through 18 can play with parents. There will be prizes and snacks. Um, you just need to register. Again, it's free. Um, go to greaterpottstowntennis.org. May 13th and 20th, Veterans Island is getting a nice cleanup by Rotarians and other volunteers. If you would like to help out, please join in. Uh, May 18th is Hobart's Run Neighborhood Meeting. May 18th is also Primary Day. Please, please, please go out and vote. It is extremely important. There are county commissioners, register of wills, and judges that all directly affect us in Pottstown. So, um, please. Primary day the 16th. Did I say the 18th? Yeah. That's me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was typing this Yeah. Week. Thank you. Thank you, Chesney. Thank you. May 16th. Sorry. I knew that. <laughs> Typo. <laughs> um, May 20th, Hobart's Run is having a cleanup. Um, the time and location to be determined. May 23rd, behind Rivet from four to seven, um, Operation 143 is having an open house. If you don't know um, what Operation 143 is, they provide food to our underprivileged youth in the area and fill up backpacks with all sorts of goodies for them. Um, so they're having an open house. May 27th, you want to go to the carousel and do yoga with goats, that is going on. And then, of course, May 29th, we have our Memorial Day Parade starting at the Goodwill Fire Company. If you are in the parade, please be there at 9. And the parade, I believe, starts at 10. Um, that's all for May. And I have two save the dates. June 4th, 1 to 5 at Iron Gate is the Go Forth fundraiser, basket raffle, etc. And... July 13th at 7 p.m. at the Hill School, the Philharmonic will be playing. 
Um, and announcements. Um, sorry. Volunteers are needed on the regular for the open pantry at the cluster. If you are interested, please contact them. Um, I also would pleasantly surprise I passed my criminal background check. Just kidding, Chief. Um, I did pass. Um, and I will be soon mentoring um, middle school students through Strive. So I'm excited about that. Nice. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Did you mention anything about this Saturday's car show? No, she didn't. No, it's also on Saturday. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. It's a busy Saturday. It is. I was typing all of this. Really yes. Saturday. So. May 6th, car show. May 6th, car show, 4, four to 9. 4 to Still something, nine. right? 3. It's 3 this year. Oh, it's 3? Yeah. 3, three to, to nine. 9, isn't it? Yeah. So just come out to High Street at 9 a.m. and stay there all day. That's it. Um, and you will find one of these activities that you can do. No reason to be home this Saturday. No. So sorry. Did not mean to forget the car show. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and from the manager, Mr. Keller. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to share some important updates with you regarding various projects and initiatives that we're currently working on in the borough. Um, first, I want to inform you that staff is planning to advertise for the position of assistant borough manager in the upcoming weeks. So um, applicants are encouraged to check our website then for further details. Um, moving on to some infrastructure updates, we've been informed that the Pico gas line work scheduled to begin on, on King Street has been moved to July 2nd, ending on July 31st. So I know that um, we're currently um, going to be uh, working with our uh, events that are happen happening, the major events that are happening in that area, so the Rumble and um, the uh, Go Forth events. But, um, it, this, this closure is going to be similar to Hanover Street, where it's only going to be weekday closures from like three, uh, 9 o'clock to 3. So we, sh we should be able to manage it. I don't have all the details on it yet, but we'll make sure we get those out there um, when we receive more information. And we will be um, putting out notifications through Ready Monco for this closure. So make sure that if you want to be included on these notifications in the future, please sign up for Ready Monco. Um, furthermore, the borough will be uh, paving the parking lot of Borough Hall. This is scheduled for May 9th and 10th, weather permitting. Um, borough Hall will remain open to the public, and public parking will be provided along the building frontage of High Street. And we apologize for any inconvenience this may cause, but uh, we're really excited to have these needed improvements made to our facilities. Um, we also want to update the the community about the progress of the county's newly formed homeless task force. This is led by uh, Commissioner Ken Lawrence. So the task force, which I'm a part of, had its first meeting and set the goal to deliver their recommendations in October. Um, to ensure a comprehensive approach, they're going to break into uh, subgroups or subcommittees for operations. Um, at least a part of one of the groups that, that I was involved with, um, we, we did advocate for um, three areas that really kind of emanated from the Pottstown Homeless Task Force, and these are prioritize, prioritizing preventing those on the margins from becoming homeless, constructing shelters and other facilities for the homeless, and coordinating volunteer, nonprofit, et cetera, uh, all, those, all those services that are serving. Uh, the homeless. So more information on that will come soon. And then lastly, we wanted to inform you that uh, the KEEP Committee and PAID has been working with the county, um, and the county is now um, circulating a memo uh, proposing a plan to allow medium and large scale entertainment uses in the KEEP project area. So we'll also have updates on that as we, as we get them. And then um, lastly, just a reminder that tomorrow we will be conducting street sweeping on High Street uh, in the morning. And then we'll also um, sweep some of our major thoroughfares, I believe Industrial Highway and College Drive, or just some of the other major thoroughfares that are on the, on the list. And that concludes my report. Okay. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Is there a um, steering committee or something for the borough manager position? Like, how do you vet the, the applicants, or is there? Yeah, that, has, that hasn't been discussed yet. 
Okay, cool. But we'll um, we'll be reaching out uh, to the president and vice president to see how they prefer to handle that. Typically, um, it, you know, it would be comprised of um, you know a borough councilor and a member of the authority. So yeah. we'll, we can talk about that. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Any other questions? All right. Uh, at this time, we're going to have a presentation on a deed restriction relief. Yeah, let me, uh, I'm going to give a brief um, <clears throat> introduction on it, but let me just uh, find where my cursor is here and share the screen, because I think they want to do present some uh, materials here tonight. Okay, that's Washington Street. All right, so I got that queued up now. And um, as you recall, this is a property that, as a condition of tax relief in order to enable redevelopment of the property, uh, council imposed various uh, deed restrictions to the property for periods of two and five years. Uh, you have a copy of these restrictions at your place here tonight. We, we passed that out for your purview. And um, the intention of the deed restriction, as I understand it, was to make sure that whatever use um, was permitted, whatever use went in to this property was permitted by zoning, contained positive job generators, and that the development was aesthetically pleasing. So that was kind of the main, I think, organizing themes for creating these restrictions on uh, this use in exchange for the tax uh, forgiveness. So just to give you an example, and this isn't what, I don't think what they're proposing to do, but just as an example, <coughs> something that provided the basis for what, what we wanted to see here, or what we did not want to see here, would be a large warehouse with storage of goods with one or two employees. That, that wouldn't be really what we, we had envisioned um, or, or what was desired. So. It's my understanding that the applicant would like to provide an update on the project and also seeks interpretation on certain uh, uses and restrictions outlined in, in the deed restriction. And before they get into it, I'll just point out that um, I believe one of the items in question is the pro prohibition of outdoor storage. Um, this is permitted in the zoning district, but it's restricted by the deed. Um, and the document, the deed restriction does not specify if outdoor storage is prohibited as a principal versus an accessory use. And we're asking council that after listening to the presentation tonight um, to let us know if, if their interpretation of the intended uh, use that they are presenting and describing here tonight meets the spirit of the deed restriction. Um, so without further ado, um, we have the applicant and the tenant here to present to you tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to introduce yourselves, and we can go. Uh, John Jones. I'm uh, the owner of the Plating Works, and this is Dan Olman, uh, my tenant that we have secured. That uh, he creates pallets. Believe it or not, we he's a manufacturer of pallets, and. Uh, what will happen is logs will come in and he actually makes the pallets. He also takes old pallets and restores them. Uh, I visited his uh, place in Norristown and uh, he's over bought things everywhere. He said no good. So he's agreed to come up to here and we got to the last, last part of the uh, lease and everything. And when I talked to the borough, we had this one thing that was still standing out there which is outside storage. So I want to explain that, and I'll let Dan explain more, but outside storage for him is it's stored, but it's constantly being moved on an ongoing basis. It's not just sitting there. And when I started out with the building, that's what I always envisioned. That's something that if there is something out there. It's never just sitting there. Uh, and so I agreed upon it. Uh, one or two employees, not a chance. This guy has right now about 18, he'll have about 20 to start. Uh, he's taking, Dan is taking over 60% of the building, but signed for the whole building, so nobody else was in it. 
uh, and his anticipation after the second year, up to the second year, is have 15 summer careers. So, all that being said, I didn't want to get down the road any further, and somebody puts their hands up and the answers. This is how we thought it was going to be. Also, when you go through some of the pictures, uh, I threw a couple of the fence that we would be putting along the outside. Uh, you want me to go through those now? Yeah, okay. Mean, this is the back of the building, and there's like four or five different types of uh, fences uh, with different fabrics on them. No different than Mayor Pollock's, uh, basically green, uh, whatever you call them, through the fence. So these are all just different types based off of price and availability, which will be going along the outside. This one has a name on it. Uh, and that's about it. So essentially, I guess when I said, yeah, we're not going to stick tons of boxes in there, never move them, and have one or two employees there, that, that doesn't help me out, that doesn't help the town out, and I was all for it. So I believe we've got a great tenant here. Uh, it says somebody moving out of Potsdam, down. Any questions? I guess those fences that you're describing, are they visible from indu from Industrial Boulevard or are they in the rear of the property or the north side of the property? They would be on the back side. Okay. The parking lot area. Okay. Also, I didn't tell us, with 50 some uh, employees, 50% of it's going to be parking. They need to park supply. So, do you have a square footage uh, for this fenced area? That you're uh, thinking of? It's going to go around this hole in, inside the property. Right at the edge of Frankie and John's. Frankie and John's will still have their parking lot. Okay. Right on it, okay. But it'll cross straight across from there. So they will, Frankie and John's will still park there. Yeah, from our <coughs> Latter Creek building, straight across and out to the front of Industrial Highway. Okay, so the whole gravel area, except for <coughs> what is. Frankie and Johnny's now, that would be enclosed by a fence? Yes. And there would also be parking in there? Yes. Okay. Yes. There will be insecurity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you said the initial operation is going to use 60% of the floor space? That's correct. Yeah. And uh, is there a reason they couldn't use the other 40% for storage? Yeah. So they could store inside and wouldn't need to store outside. No, uh, actually, our, our plan is to utilize almost all of the inside space for the manufacturing process of the pallet. So we're a pallet recycler and a pallet manufacturer. So there's basically two classes of pallets use pallets that come in that we repair and then resell as used pallets because some customers don't want to pay. New, in fact, most most people that buy pallets buy used pallets, and then we also do the new pallets, um, which is almost like a separate business. So it'll be a separate part of the warehouse, and there's manufacturing for the new pallets. So it's somewhat automated with machinery that puts the pallets together. Mm -hmm. um, automatic nailers that nail the pallets. So on the repair side, there's still some automation as well. There's a repair line with conveyors that bring the, uh, the pallets to the workers who do the repair, and then it goes to automatic stackers that stack them. You could just stack them about 20 high to load into your tractor trailers. So the outside would be overflow storage for uh, repair pallets. They come in, but then we'll bring inside, process, and then they'll move out through the trucks, through the bay doors. And then on the new pallet side of the business, we will be taking saw logs for basically trees and converting them into lumber with a sawmill that will cut them into a rectangular portion that's called a cant. And then that's further cut down into tech boards and runners, or basically two by fours, which are then assembled into full pallets. So it's from log to, oh, can you not hear me? I'm sorry. Could, could you all hear me, or do you need me to repeat? I usually talk pretty loud. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. So, um, 
so we would wind up using most of the inside space for the manufacturing processing portion of the business. And the outside would be for, like I said, the overflow storage of um, recycled pallets that come in. But they'll always be recycling through. And then the same thing with the logs. The, uh, the, the property had been an eyesore for quite a long period of time. And uh, I, I think the reason for the deed restriction was that once the property was improved, we wanted it to remain that way, to have something aesthetically appealing to look at. And that's why it went into the deed restriction to begin with. Anyone? Yeah, I certainly concur. It looks you know, considerably better than it did you know, over a year ago. It's not like a canvas for you know, graffiti anymore. But Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly taken consideration. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to soften the appearance of the outdoor service, uh, uh, outdoor storage? I mean, by soften to make it look less against what they wanted to do in the first place? Why they well, put it in there in the first place? Is there a way to work and figure out something that? Sure, I think the, um, the fencing is, is part of that. And then two, the way that you, um, you store the pallets, you know, there'll be nice stacks. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you know, if you've ever seen what we call a pallet yard where they're stored, if they're stored nicely, dress right dress, they, they don't look bad, they don't look unappealing. Um, I'm an ex-military guy, so the way I run the business, everything is dress right dress. So it does at least, they're not messy piles. They're nice, organized piles. So that is more aesthetically pleasing, um, if that helps at all. No, I just, just wondered if there was a way. Cause there's a I think the fence, honestly, three quarters of it, I think, is going to be behind it. But you won't see it. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Fences, the fence yeah. was agreed. How high will the piles go? I don't know. Um, we could keep them so that they're just a hair over the the fence height. How high is the fence? I think that's eight footers. Okay. Yeah. So they'd be, you know, ten, twelve feet high stacks. When you put twenty, twenty high, which is how we normally store them. It's, it's no it can go through a bay door, so it's uh, it's around 10 feet, 10, 11 feet. If you go on Kime Street and see the salt manufacturer that has the them stacked there mm. all over the place, and they're, they're nice and straight, and they don't have a fence even. Uh, I think you got Mayor Pollock who has the fence there that you see shit everywhere. Yeah, we know. <laughs> right. That's what we want to try to avoid. I mean, that fence doesn't look... I agree. Right. Listen, I, I think I did a great job in this building. I'm not here to bring Agreed. somebody that uh, yeah. I'm not. I want to be happy about it too, and I'm very happy to see this many people come into Pottstown. Believe me. Me too, but we want to so. keep it looking nice. We don't want to compare it to the fence and the area we see now. Right. right? We want it to be better Agreed. than that. Great. Isn't that what this is? The proposal for the fence back here? Yes, the two, but that's not the building. Like, well, no, I get that. Would you be able to describe to me like where you would see that on this uh, picture? Right at the curb area, like where the trees are. That's where the fence will go. Right on. Yep. All the way down to the end of the other gray building, which is Latticrete. It'll go straight across there, and Frankie and Johnny's will still have their uh, their area. So my my impression is is that we've got to get something a little more decorative. Along that front edge on industrial. Um, we just have Pot Sound Community Arts got a mural on it. Ooh, that's nice. Boy, what, what's Ooh, what, mural. what are you talking about? How oh, that's a mural to sign up. A fence that it's a little more uh, decorative and or concealing. Um, would you would you be open to something like that or, or yeah, pretty much did you see all the pictures of that? I mean it's it's looks like a it looks like a standard chain link fence with the uh, the fabric. Woven through it, right? Yeah. And that wears easy. And it looks, doesn't look good once it wears. Okay. I, I mean, I'm sure there's something out there. I, you know, for this meeting, I wanted you to understand there's going to be a fence there. Yeah. You can't see through it. Right. I personally would see that. 
what the fins would look like. Okay. Yeah. That's just me. I'm just one person. And I would agree with you, Lisa. Uh, we, we've gone through this with uh, Advanced Auto. We've gone through it with McDonald's. And we really would like to see some representation. This is what it's going to be. Is there a particular style of fence that would be? I mean, there's more? all kind of different things that you can do now. I mean, there's real yeah. cool stuff that you can even do with like metal panels, you know. Um, I, yeah. um, if we had some of our former counselors up here, they would be talking about brick and wrought iron, and I don't think we're there. But uh, you know, something fitting for the town. And of course we want the jobs. We're nobody saying, you know, we don't want you here or we don't want jobs here. But I like I think the general consensus is we want it to be aesthetically pleasing. I mean, I drive down industrial all the time and I look at the metal and that fence and it doesn't look nice. So I would re I mean, you've done a wonderful job with the building. Like I said, I've been driving by it for years. I saw you clean it up and the graffiti come back and you clean it up and you didn't stop. And I personally appreciate that. I want to see a business go in, but we have to keep the outside looking nice too. Yeah. It's not a, I mean, yeah. we can get past that. It I'm is, sure we can. Okay. You put something out there. I was just showing you guys, we are doing something so you don't mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. direct patterns. Right. There's probably 50 different things that, that we could come up with. Good. That's not a problem. Good. I want you to say, okay, as long as we come up with something, mm -hmm. I think we're we'll, in state right now. So yes. we, we want something we can be proud of and, and you know maybe stretch it and say, hey, this is a destination site. You've got to see this. Okay. Just I just have one other question. So and this kind of gets back to the use and the way that it's it's worded in the in the deed restriction. Um, it, there's there's some um, ambiguity on, you know, the outdoor storage use, why you know, it's permitted by zoning, so that that shouldn't be an issue. By right, right by right. Yeah. Um, but when we went through the restrictions, we pulled out from the, the zoning the permitted uses that we thought uh, we did, we better be a little more cautious with this one, knowing that hey, you can always come back to us and seek relief, which is which is what you're doing now on on this one. Um, but it doesn't say whether that is a primary use or a, in, the, in the deed restriction, whether it's restricted as a primary use or as an accessory use. What is the primary use of this entire facility? Is it outdoor storage or is it man, light manufacturing? I would say light manufacturing. Yeah, uh, the, the outdoor storage facilitates the manufacturing. Right. Those are the materials we use to do the manufacturing. So you'll have both raw material and product. Co yes, correct. So you can, obviously the trees are certainly raw material, and even the used pallets, we call them cores, are considered raw material because they're not in a usable form at that point. Mm -hmm. We fix and repair them to make to make that, them usable again. That's your input. Yes. So it'll be both input and output. Correct. What, uh, what's the pace of the flow? So you get pallets in that have to be repaired, you get the raw materials in. How long is it sitting around before it makes its way into the manufacturing process? Uh, pretty quick. Um, we process about eight to 10,000 pallets a week. So they don't sit long. They're, they're getting, you know, we have a crew of right now that do the actual processing uh, 12 guys and we'll add more once the facility we're in a larger facility so they they can process a lot of pallets in a day. But if you have 8 to 12 coming in you have an excess of that going out considering you're adding also new. Yeah. Oh yeah when and especially once we start ramping up the new we'll have even more mm -hmm. workers so it's it's going to be a lot of workers. And, and I'm sorry you talked about a little bit what type of equipment is in there it's uh automated nailing and moving yeah so it's um conveyors to move the pallets around automatic stackers to stack the pallets um a automated nailer to um, nail the component parts on the new and they're connected on an assembly line 
so to speak. Yes. And, and then um, we have cutting lines for dismantling pallets as well um, that completely cuts apart pallets that are beyond repair. And then the, the parts from the cut-up pallets are used to repair the other used pallets. And a sawmill. And a, and a sawmill, obviously, for the cutting of the logs. And the then log. there's a cutting line involved with that one that takes the cans and saws them into the deck boards, like the very thin deck boards that go on the top, as well as the two-by-fours. So it's um, a number of different saws, um, automated nailers, conveyors, stackers, things of that nature. And then, of course, we have forklifts and things like that to move pallets around. And then um, some tractor trailers and trailers that would be in the, in the bays. Matt, question for you. I'm concerned that we're mixing up zoning and deed restrictions. Deed restriction can be enforced by those around it. So I would, if we can give him the relief that he needs, okay, and it's done in a way that makes sense for everybody, we probably can do that. However, I'm not sure that with a deed restriction that is that is enforceable by those around it, that we have the power to waive a deed restriction that's not discriminatory. I think that's something that we would have to investigate to make sure that whatever we give him is actually enforceable as a deed restriction, because they're different. Correct. Yeah, correct, there are two pieces here. There's zoning and the deed restriction. So the proposed use has to be permitted under the zoning ordinance or else a variance would be required. For this particular property, you have the additional layer of the, the deed restriction. Um, sort of what the heart of the issue here is what is outdoor storage and, and does this fit into that? And that's certainly something we have to, uh, the goal tonight was information. Right. And we've gotten a lot of good information and, and certainly between now and Monday, and if we need more time, we need more time to do that analysis as to you know, how this matches the zoning ordinance and what's in the deed restriction. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, what made you pick Pottstown? Uh, the the warehouses and you know there's it's a I think it's a, a great town to do business in. There's other similar type businesses that um, I think would fit with us and, and 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 just the availability of the warehouse. Really, it's I've been looking for a long time for the right warehouse that will fit us and allow us to grow as much as we are going to grow in the next 10 years. So we've grown a lot um, to the point where it became an issue. So we needed a larger warehouse for sure. And, um, you know, this warehouse fits that bill. And, I, and I've spent a lot of time looking. So, and, I, and, and when I do pick a place, um, I want it to be a place that we can be in long term. So we're looking for like a 10 year lease. And then another, good aspect of Pottstown is that um, it's its location with the highways and all the different places we deliver to. So we we deliver pallets to um, companies as far as Carlisle and York, Harrisburg, down into Maryland, um, over into southern Jersey, mid-Jersey. Um, we had a customer in Delaware, but not anymore. <laughs> but uh, Delaware as well is a possibility. So. It, it allows us to get um, onto the turnpike, onto 76, 202, um, all the major thoroughfares, and it just seems like a good business town to me. You know, like I, I could definitely see Pottstown is a great place for the next 10 years and beyond for DJ Pallets. Great. Good. Yep. And, and, you know, sometimes I say that uh, our availability and we're having spaces available is and the diversity of spaces that we have it's really something for every every business here that's really our one of our best abilities a absolutely and that's what i was trying to to communicate but yes i think you nailed it with that absolutely we didn't plan it but we do have the intersection of routes 100 and 422 oh yeah and, and from there you can go anywhere yep so it's great. It really is. When you look on the map mm -hmm. and with the highways, it's like a great location. It really is. Mm -hmm. 
Would you consider shipping by rail? Uh, if if it was cost effective, I would. But you know, our our customers are typically need the pallets fairly quick and on a regular basis. And Got it. Really, the best way is tractor trailer. Tractor. Okay. Any other questions? No. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So I, I would ask our solicitor and staff to look into this. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Uh, cooperative agreement. All right. Um, this was one that uh, Paid was asking to uh, revisit. Um, this is the proposal to issue uh, an RFP for properties that the borough owns on Industrial Highway. Um, unless somebody has like really specific uh, questions or want me, wants me to recap what this is all about. Um, it's a matter that's identical to the, the process that was already approved for the HES lot, so I wasn't planning on giving a full kind of recap of it. Um, but basically due to continued interest from several developers on, on this property, there, there is a desire to um, move forward and see what might be out there. And just keeping in mind that uh, th this, the agreement with with paid and the RFP doesn't obligate the borough to anything. So if you don't like what we attract, we can we can simply say no. Um, but if you recall, these properties have been vacant for decades, and the purpose of the project is to make the land more productive and get it back onto the tax rolls. So, Aid's asking council to reconsider the proposal for the cooperation agreement um, based on the reasoning provided in the January 26th email, which is at your seats tonight. So, if there are any questions, I can. I can try to take those. Anything? It's attached to the agenda. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's attached to the agenda. It wasn't. It wasn't passed out. I left my glasses in the car. I'm like, which one? Open. No questions at this time. Uh, would you all review this by Monday, and we'll continue the discussion then. Okay. <laughs> Thirteen flags and signs in front of buildings. Yes. Yeah, so based on some of the commentary at the last meeting, the Ordinance Review Committee met to start work on um, revamping the entire sign ordinance, actually, which is which is. Um, quite a, a daunting process and one that we have started a long time ago, but we've had other other um, kind of more pressing issues come up that have gotten in the way of us implementing this. But I think our solicitor and our, our zoning officer have done a tremendous job in um, really kind of boiling this down to something more, more succinct and, and, and workable that I think we could have access <coughs> uh, very soon. But um, it would appear that the, the flags signs in front of buildings, um, this would fall into actually the sign ordinance. So this is something the group is already uh, looking at. Um, and these would be typically classified as uh, banner flags. And uh, these are placed in front of buildings. There are requirements for how many can be placed at a building, whether they can be placed at all, and then what, what the um, height, separation, distance, uh, size, all that kind of stuff is. So it was my impression that the ORC is inclined to create more reasonable accommodations for the banner flag use um, in regard to the number and size in areas outside of the downtown zoning district. But um, I'll turn it over to Councillor Vanny to make sure that we're capturing all of her thoughts on this. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm kind of frustrated with this because I brought this up last summer. Um, by taking so long to address this, we're hurting businesses because we've made them take their flags down. Um, we can put something through for hookah bars, um, which was needed, but there's no line to have hookah bars. We have business sa businesses saying, by not being able to have these flags, they're losing customers. That's kind of their advertisement. Um, so it's just unfortunate that it has taken this long to even begin to address it. So my question is, do we have an estimated time when some resolution to this will, will be out? I believe it was July. 
I mean, it's going to, the honest answer is going to be closer to the end of the year. The, the sign ordinance is, uh, um, there's layers on top of layers on top of layers, and it's, it's a major project to work through just the, the sign types, then what areas they'd be permitted in, then uh, all the dimensional requirements for them. And you're talking everything from small window signs up to billboards are all within that ordinance. Um, under the current ordinance, the committee can take a look at this, I think, more closely. So in talking with the zoning officer, like Mr. Keller mentioned, uh, these are permitted signs, but for each business, they're limited in the number of signs they can have, the total sign area amongst all the signs, and then the size of the signs themselves. And so if it's a situation where a business, um, you know, for example, in the uh, downtown gateway, uh, they're permitted two signs per property and three if you're on a, a corner with two frontages. So the way it's structured right now is the business owners have the option of choosing what types of signs they have on the property, you know, within that. Um, so we can certainly take a look at adjusting those numbers. You know, I can't tell you how complicated it's going to be because it's a bit like a Rubik's Cube where you start moving one thing, um, it gets harder. But, uh, you know, Certainly the working group can take a look at this, this specific issue for July. The overall ordinance probably won't be ready till the end of the year. I appreciate the honest answer. Um, I just want to clarify what you said. The, the signs on the buildings or the flags attached to the buildings are okay. It's just the flags outside of the buildings? All of them count as signs. So, uh, you know, for example, if you have a corner property, you could have up to three. You could have three signs on your building. You could have one window sign, two flags out front. You, you have flexibility to choose how many signs you have and what type of signs they are. Okay, that's not how I understood it. And then my question would be, why were certain signs asked to be taken down instead of that being explained to the businesses that they could choose their signs. I thought those big flags in the ground was the issue. Now, with, and we can get into specific businesses. Okay. You know, but, you know, for example, I, I, I talked to the zoning officer about Donut Envy, and, and in their case. Well, it wasn't Donut Envy. Okay, but just using them as an example. They, they have um, several pre existing non conforming window signs. Um, and then had put out four of the flag signs uh, in addition to one wall sign. And this is just an example. Correct, just, just right. as an okay. example. And so the zoning officer did reach out to them and said, you know, you explained, you know, you don't have a permit for certain, for some of these signs. Uh, you're exceeding the number that's permitted, uh, likely exceeding the, the total area, but we won't know that till you file your application. And in response to that communication, they just removed the, the signs. And so other businesses have received similar notices. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a, a list I can share with you of properties that in response complied and, and actually removed a lot of those signs, you know, rather than either seeking a variance or, or you know, going through the permit process. Well, yeah, if we could talk some specifics. Um, it is just unfortunate because certain buildings you can't, see inside from the street. So you had no choice but to put things on windows, and those things on windows have been there for a really long time. So kind of confused how it just became an issue. Um, so maybe we can talk about that after this meeting. Sure. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone? Okay, and uh, we'll continue our discussions on that then. The Hill School Tennis Facility, they're ready to go forward? Yeah, so um, this, this uh, proposal includes improvements to the existing tennis courts, uh, disturbs approximately 10,000 square feet, two-level building that they're going to have with locker rooms, bathroom facilities, storage, meeting rooms. Um, there's also 37 parking spaces. And uh, the Planning Commission approved the final land development subject to satisfying the engineer comment letter 
and they <coughs> recommended approving the waivers. So there's a number of waivers uh, that will be requested and the applicant indicates that they will be complying with uh, all of the other uh, engineers comments with the exception of the waivers that they're requesting. Um, we've taken a look and staff's taken a look at these waivers that they're requesting and find them to be fairly typical items that we see in um, many developments and really nothing out of right. the ordinary. So agreed. So any questions on this? If not, we'll list it for approval for Monday evening. Great. And five is uh, the land development plan. Anything else to add there? Yeah, so this one, council, uh, for your call, previously approved a waiver of the land development process for the project, which basically allows the applicants of minor, minor developments to save time and skip a step by skipping the planning commission meeting. So the April 20th letter from Langen Engineers outlines the waivers, which have been reviewed by the borough's engineer and similar to the project uh, that we just talked about, all are fairly standard waivers for this, this type of uh, minor land development. Okay, we'll add that for Monday evening. Yep. Okay, uh, 16 is the zoning relief. Request. Hold it. I'm going to have to exit this okay. particular meeting. Understood. I represent the applicant. I can be no part of this deliberation in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to go into the hall, and you guys can come get me when you want or not. I'll come get you. Thank you, Mr. Minostra. Okay, Mr. Hovey. Okay, number 16, the zoning relief request for 232 East High Street. Um, as Councilor Minostra indicated uh, in this matter, he represents the applicant uh, and on our advice is, you know, excluding himself from the room during any type of discussions on this. Uh, the applicant is Vince Jaffe. Um, this is the, the property, which is the, the pawn shop. There is a second unit in the building. Uh, the applicant is proposing to use that second uh, unit uh, for a meeting community room, uh, for book clubs, other intellectual pursuits, or a place for friends to gather to watch a game or play cards. Uh, as I talked a little bit during the presentation on conditional uses, uh, every property has some use and needs to be defined in some way. Um, for this particular one, uh, the closest fit within the zoning ordinance, the, the zoning officer determined sort of the closest fit um, based on the information that's provided uh, perhaps would be indoor recreation. Um, indoor recreation, if, if that's determined, is what the use is, is permitted in the downtown but not as part of a mixed-use building. Uh, as a result, if that's what it is, a variance would be required for this use. Um, the applicant also challenged and appealed the zoning officer's determination. So in front of the zoning hearing board, again, they'd be able to present evidence to try to fit it into one of the permitted uses if they wanted to. Uh, with this particular one, uh, given the layers here, uh, if there's any type of uh, questions or discussion, um, zoning applications are a matter of litigation, so they can be discussed in executive session. Uh, my recommendation to you would be that we have a short executive session after the meeting if there are any questions or discussion, but that's certainly up to council. Are there any questions? Yeah, but I have to wait to the executive session, right? You know what you said? Right. <clears throat> so you have questions? I do have some questions. Okay. Okay. And we'll have a, a short right. executive session uh, on this matter, which is a matter of litigation following the meeting. Okay. And would there be any action taken after this session? Uh, not this evening. I uh, recommend that it be listed for Monday evening. Okay. okay. Very good. 17 is the part Can budget. You get it? Thanks. No, bring them out there. No, you, you said you would get it. I know, but I, I'm supposed <laughs> to go, so I, I didn't realize I was next up. <laughs> What's the budget for part? All right, so the next three items <clears throat> are all, all related to part, so I'm just going to kind of cover them um, all in one shot. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, for our public uh, 
transportation bus service. Um, the first is the part budget. If you recall, the part budget runs on the fiscal year. Um, so it has been prepared and reviewed by staff and consultants. The budget totals 2.9 million and it's an increase of 5%. Um, the second item that we're requesting is uh, the part local match. And um, it's important to keep in mind that approximately 90% of the part budget is federally funded. And the remaining matches are primarily covered by Chester and Montgomery County. So uh, the borough has little, if any, um, outlay uh, of its own uh, cash for this service. The third item there is the contract to operate part <clears throat> with equipment uh, leased by the borough, so the buses and, and paratransits and other equipment. Um, and this is run by a third party. As the original term has elapsed um, on that agreement, uh, the, the agreement allows for um, three uh, one-year renewals, and they are requesting a renewal of the first year. And if, um, if there are any questions on those, so basically we're asking council to um, approve the uh, part uh, budget, approve the local match, and approve the um, contract extension as, as uh, allowed under the current lease agreement uh, with uh, the third party. Okay, any questions? Hearing none, we'll list it for Monday evening. Okay. Uh, 19, 20 is the street overlay paving. Those bids are opening on Friday, and we'll have uh, feedback on that Monday night. For Monday, very good. Address that down. 21, Friends and Family Day. Yeah, so I believe they they've, might have done this before. This will be on uh, June 7th. Um, 2023, uh, from 28 to 30 North Washington Street. They'll be closing the town wall. I think it's only like three to three to eight. Three to eight. Three to eight. Three to eight. Yeah. Okay. Very good. We'll list that for Monday. 22 is the Juneteenth Community Day. All right. So yeah, this is a first um, for this event. So certainly glad to have that. And they are asking for the use of uh, Smith Family Plaza. So I think that we have a, a request in the FTA for that as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but they're also asking to close um, High Street um, between York and Hanover Street for the celebrations that day. Uh, they have a date of 617. They have a rain date of 618. And the time is from 1030 AM to uh, 5 p.m. Um, I understand that they are going to have um, some uh, music, a fashion show, um, a bunch of vendors, and other things going on. So it should be should be a pretty fun time. Okay. Any questions? No. We'll list that one. 23 is the Independence Day Parade. Uh, yes. Um, so we have this. This is scheduled for. Uh, July 4th, and let me just get the details on this one. Uh, this is by the Pottstown Rotary, and it will be from 9 a.m. Uh, with, or I'm sorry, assembly time will be at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Parade start time will be at 10.15, and then it will terminate at 11 a.m. Um, it will go from Goodwill uh, Fire Company and then down High Street um, West. Um, from Adams to Manitani Street, and they will disband at Manitani and High. Okay. And we'll list that for Monday. Well, it's Parks and Rec, the Patriotic 5K. All right, so I think this is the one that's done in, in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, what are they closing? For all the July 4th uh, activities there. And they close in conjunction with the parade, essentially. Okay. Yeah. No questions. We'll list that one for approval. Harb has one person or one place, 62 North Hanover Street. Yeah, this is um, uh, an uh, application from Alex Butts. Terry Fetterman is, is the owner here. This is residential use. 
So what they want to do is they want to tear off the roof um, and install new asphalt uh, dimensional shingles. The current roof is slate, and they're proposing they would need relief to switch to uh, an asphalt. So I don't know if there are any, if anyone here is on the harb and has any additional details on that. Yeah, I was at that meeting, and um, yeah, they want to replace the roof, and, and it's become more common that the slate roofs being extraordinarily expensive have been replaced with architectural shingles that aren't slate but have some They look like appearance. slate. They look Straight. better. They look better, okay? Um, so that's become relatively um, commonplace, okay? Um, the applicant is going to work with Keith because there is some gutter work that will need to be done that wasn't on the application, and there was much discussion about the fact that there was no gutter work when they were going to replace the um, gutters. So the board decided that they would work with Mr. Place, who has always been very good with that kind of stuff, and we'll work with them to um, make sure that they put something uh, better. Worthy gutters. What? Worthy, worthy gutters. Worthy gutters. Well, there's different kinds of yeah. different kinds of gutters. There's tray gutters, and okay. and so, uh, but they had no plan for it at all. Okay, mm -hmm. Mr. Butts did not have any plan for it at all. Right. Okay. Now. That property, uh, we are happy to see it's finally getting some attention, okay, because it has started to yes. deteriorate, and they are now in a position that they're able to start the necessary work on it. So um, the roof isn't a real issue. It's the gutters, and that's what... I think they have the, uh, the old school pool gutters, which were built into the soffit. It'd be yeah. extraordinarily expensive to re remake those out of copper, which probably they would. Yeah, that's why I made mine out of copper when that when I had to get my gutters replaced. Yeah, they're not cheap. Okay, and especially the, the <coughs> details of the roof line. That would be. A lot yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's why we're going to, you know, Harb, which I resigned from, um, uh, has historically worked with um, homeowners to try to come up with innovative solutions to very difficult problems of, of expense, okay? And this is one of the ways that we've worked with them, and we've had great success with Keith um, working with the, uh, taking on additional responsibilities or part of your responsibilities or whatever, but stepping in there and doing, and helping us out. Because as one of our flagship residents, I would say, I admit, uh, I'm sure they'll find you know, some way to make it economical and still- We usually try to do that. Is it possible that uh, Mr. Place, our board, and the owner will have an agreement by Monday? I think what we've traditionally done is we've left it up to, to Mr. Place to, to work with the applicant. Um, okay. Yeah, had if you, pretty good results with that. Right. But if there are any updates, certainly he could, uh, I would ask that uh, Mr. Place passes those along. All right. So we can list it Monday night conditionally that uh, yeah. everyone has to agree. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say something real quick. Oh. Yeah, actually, the application is going forward, and it's got an answer in the next week. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right, so we'll list that for Monday. Uh, 26, these are administratively approved. There are 11 items on there. And we'll list that. What do I have? And the upcoming board vacancies. For HARB, there's one vacant term to expire April 1, 2026, in the applicant. Yeah, and this will run um, for a minimum of 30 days, which is what we typically do. We have uh, three applicants, I think, so far. We have Viviana Miguel, Tracy Purdy, and Wayne um, Festermacher. All right, so no action Monday. Comments from any of our citizens? All right, first I'll go to the online comments, and um, first up is Deb Spence. 
Good evening, everyone. Your uh, address, like to, please. Uh, it is 153 South Rowland Street. Thank you. Pottstown, Pennsylvania, 19464. Thank you. Go ahead. You are welcome. I'd like to thank Ginny, the borough secretary, for helping me um, last month when I attended the EAC meeting and it was vacant and the room was cold. She's very kind. She's very sweet. She had maintenance come up and turn the heat on. So I'd just like to thank her for that and all of the other borough employees that are great. Keith Place, Winter Stokes, they're all super awesome, very nice and kind to me. And um, I also like to uh, request that my question from last month be answered. Um, still didn't receive an answer for that at all. Um, this month, my question is again about the, the boards, the different boards. Uh, it's very interesting that that EAC meeting didn't take place. I mentioned it on Facebook and I got attacked by leadership and on, on these different committees. And, and that's upsetting because um, I think leaders should be more concerned about these meetings um, being more effective and efficient and not attacking um, members of the community. Um, it's great to see that the running store is successful, um, but my real estate business has to compete with paid. And my question is, why does paid, um, how come they get to list um, real estate and people that come to the borough have to go to pay to get real estate transactions done. Um, they're not real estate brokerage. Um, there is actually a real estate brokerage in Pottstown in the borough, right across the street from Borough Hall, um, right next to the running store um, that, that you all mentioned. So how come that real estate brokerage, um, AKA Fierce Realty, Deb Spence, how come um, I can't get listings for, or any real estate brokerage in, I guess on the outskirts of town, cause there's only one in town, but how, how come we have to com compete with pay <clears throat> as far as real estate um, listings are concerned? Thank you. And I will uh, get back to you with your comments from last, last month. It's been a busy month. Okay, um, next up we have uh, Bruce Madera, please. Uh, good evening. Uh, First, I want to thank the borough manager for doing one of his many duties, adjusting microphones, uh, <laughs> uh, which it seems like the two people talking didn't recognize right in front of them. Um, <clears throat> so I'm hearing that the school district here is going to uh, give a, a rebate, and uh, I was in touch with the business office over there uh, yesterday, <clears throat> and because things didn't quite make sense the way it was reported in the Mercury. And the woman I talked to said, no, it was mis misreported. Uh, evidently, you don't have to register. Uh, my argument to her was you don't have to register to get a tax bill in July. Uh, you know, they know you're here uh, and they send you a tax bill. So this will be, the way she explained it, would be automatic uh, coming, reflected in your in your, uh, in your tax bill. Um, a comment, uh, uh, several comments were made at uh, last month's meeting about uh, yet what to do with the homeless. And uh, a suggestion was made, well, maybe we can make another committee and talk about it and define the problem. Uh, I just struggle with seeing how that's helping anything. 
who doesn't know the problem after all this time? And uh, um, also, the, the lastly, the seventh ward could use some uh, uh, live uh, misrepresentation. Uh, I don't see anybody here. I don't see anybody online. Um, I don't know what can be done about that, but we don't seem to have representation. I could make the suggestion that you, you extend uh, the sixth ward uh, to include uh, uh, North Adams Street, so I can bug somebody else. Uh, and <laughs> bug somebody else instead of the uh, guy I, I'm trying to find, but I don't know where he is, you know. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> that concludes uh, citizen comment. Okay. Uh, let me see. Gen Councilor's general discussion. Uh, I just will make the announcement we will be having an executive session, and uh, we will not be returning. Uh, no action will be taken tonight. So, we have no one from the seventh. Anyone from the sixth with a comment? Well, apparently the sixth is growing. But uh, anybody can come to me at any time from any ward and ask me anything, and then I'll go to their particular counselor and, and, do th and try to intercede for them. That's, that's what I'll do. I'll try to do that. I'll try to help you out and get you an answer. It may not be the answer you like, but it will be an answer. Um, well, on the, the only thing I want to say is um, Mr. Madeira, I love you, buddy. I do. Because you're here. You come and you care enough to come. Miss mm -hmm. Pence, she's always here. Mm -hmm. She comes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Where's everybody else? If people in this town want change, we better start coming out to these meetings and hold our feet to the fire because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help people here. And if you're not coming, we don't know that you're upset. And get off Facebook. Facebook is not government. Facebook is nonsense, okay? Don't, don't talk about the problems in the borough on Facebook. It's really not government. This is government. This is your opportunity to come. You will get your three minutes to speak. And you can say whatever you want to say. And the more people that come, the more of a representative, interactive government we will have. Please come. I'd really like to see you. I would. I have no, nothing else to say, but I encourage this room to be filled, not with borough employees, but with actual citizens who live every day and do and go through what we go through every day as we live in Pottstown. So please, please come out. Bruce, I look forward to seeing you every time. I do. Thank you. Ms. Spence, thank you. Everybody else, come on out, please. Oh, Edgewood Cemetery cleanup, please come. What time is the cemetery and everything? Um, 11 to 3. It's this coming Saturday. Yes. This coming Saturday. Yes. Okay. I, I, I missed your company last week. I know you called. I, know, I, oh, I was down there. I checked how muddy it was. And uh, wise decision not to have us parking there or walking all over that wet. Ooh. Turn up that place. Yeah. Okay. And from Ward 4. Councillor Lindsay. Um, everything that Andrew said, I second that. We, as counselors, we serve everyone. We community servants, and that's what we do. So just like Andrew said, you can go to Andrew. You don't necessarily have to be in Ward 7 or Ward 2. You can come to all of us. We serve all of the wards. But keep in mind, we will let your ward um, represent um, person know what's going on. Um, Back to, I just want to tag on to Ms. Spence um, coming in and there was no meeting. Um, we have to at least going forward say there's no meeting or it's canceled or something like that. We have to communicate because proper communication, we have to do that because if I'd have drove up here, somebody would have gave me gas money. So, and I'd have been upset. I sat here and looked for a meeting. Whether it was 
it wasn't there not. So going forward, we need to address that so no one will come up there and waste their time to come up to the meetings. They need, we need to say it's canceled. We had a meeting online and uh, and we and here's what we talked about, even just little short bullets. It don't take you but two seconds to do that. So going forward, we need to do that because that didn't look good on us and I don't like that. So, oh, so that that's my two cents. I, all my paper, all my tablet is at home. I came straight from work, so I apologize. I don't have anything. So. Oh, and I'll be at the cemetery. Yay. Yay. See you there. Uh, from Ward 3, Vice President Lebedinsky. Nothing. Nothing. Ward 2. Always. <laughs> so just to go off what um, Andrew and Trinita said, there's also another option, and it's to call or email your council person. Um, mm -hmm. I talked to very many people over the last three years on the phone. I've gone out and met them um, and through email. So... Before you get, and I've ignored Facebook for the last three years. You can't legislate on Facebook. And like uh, Mr. Menasher said, come and talk to us, whether it's in person, email, phone, um, text. Mm -hmm. Text. Mm -hmm. Text is always preferable, right? Because mm -hmm. you got a minute to get back to them and you don't have to listen to a voicemail. Um, so, that aside, I have some fun news. Um, speaking of Donut Envy, um, I was there. Yesterday, because um, I, I was I had a cold, so I had a sore throat. So I went in and asked Daryl to make me a milkshake, and it was delicious. Mm -hmm. But as we were talking for a minute, um, he has seen me with some of the kids in the neighborhood go around and pick up trash. I know you'll like this. Um, so in my area, around Donut Envy, like South Street, around that area, um, we're gonna have a cleanup. He offered. He gave me a cap on the number of kids, but he would like kids to come out. Um, do a cleanup, and after the cleanup, he will open the store and he will give a free bag of donuts and a drink to the kids. So, if you're interested in doing that, send me an email, text, or you can call me. Uh, my information is on the website, um, and I'm going to try to get a group, and then we'll see how much interest, and we'll pick a date. But I thought that was wonderful of a business just to offer that be involved with the community um, without prompting from me. I, I asked for nothing and he offered. So I would encourage more of our businesses to do that. Um, so if you know anybody that their kids might be interested, please reach out to me. Thank you, that's all. Great. That's awesome. And from Ward 1, oh, Councillor Prosco. Congratulations to Sergeant Hatfield again. Actually, my boy saw him this morning for uh, bike to school, although they cheated. Uh -huh. It was a little... Kind of a ways for their age, so that my wife told him, drove him three quarters of the way, but <laughs> still kind of counts. Oh, see you Saturday. Too. Still young. Yeah. Yeah. It? Okay. Mayor Henrik. Nope. Nope. Okay, and uh, I have nothing more to add except this Saturday. Don't stay home. You can start the day off uh, with our, our counselor from the sixth ward cleaning up Edgewood Cemetery. Um, we'll see as many of you as possible. You can finish the night on High Street. Um, go dancing out there amongst the cars. Uh, we will be going to an executive session. We'll let, we will not be taking any action, so we won't be back. Meeting adjourned.